Minister of Africa on its anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism measures. The assessment was done by FATF, which is an intergovernmental organization on international structure founded to combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism. South Africa has been a member of the FATF since 2003. The full report will be released through the website of the FATF and a full statement outlining government's response on areas of weaknesses highlighted in the assessment and measures to strengthen its measures will be provided and cabinet appreciated the report. On the dissolutions of the board of the National Home Builders Registration, Registration Council, which is commonly called NHPRC, Com cabinet on concurred with the decision of the Human Settlement Minister Mamuluku Kubai to dissolve the current board of the NHPRC whilst the Department of Human Settlement finalizes the process of appointing a fully constituted board. The term of the current board expired on the 31st July 2021 and was extended to 1st August 2021. Cabinet also concurred with the appointment of Mr. Mpedzizeni Alfred Radzilani as the administrator of the NHBRC in the interim. Extension of the National State Disaster. Cabinet approved the extension of the National State of Disaster to 15 September 2021 in terms of the section, section 27, subsection 5, paragraph C of the Disaster Management Act 2002. In other words, the, the protocol as they pertain are going to continue. On the upcoming events, group of 20 or, or G20 compact with Africa, cabinet welcomed the outcomes of the G20 compact with Africa meeting that was held in Berlin, Germany on 26 and 27 August 2021. Discussions focus on vaccine production in Africa and ways in which to improve the business environment and increase investment. South Africa is a member of the G20 and co-chairs the G20 command with Africa in, uh, African Initiative alongside Germany. President Cyril Ramaphosa also met with the Councillor Angela Merkel to discuss the bilateral and regional issues. On the tourism month, the council, the country will commemorate Tourism Month in September and World Tourism Day on Monday, 27 September 2021, under the theme, open quote, Tourism for Inclusive Growth, COVID-19 Recovery, Building Back Better, close quote. This year's Tourism Month will encourage South Africans to do their part in sustaining jobs by traveling domestically and supporting the recovery of tourism in line with the tourism sector recovery plan which sets out the which sets out to, in to which sets out interventions to support the sector's recovery i beg your pardon cabinet encouraged south africans to vaccinate and explore our beautiful country whilst adhering to all health protocols including the wearing of a face mask in public washing hands regularly and maintaining social distancing some messages for the public consumption. On congratulation, Cabinet extended its congratulation and well wishes to the following. The South African Under-20 Athletics team for their performance at the Under-20 World Athletics Championship held in Nairobi, Kenya from the 17th to the 22nd August 2021. Team SA amassed nine medals, including breaking the men's under 20, 4 by, 4, 4, 4, 4 by 400 meters relay world record. Let me read it, 100 by 4 meters relay record. Team South Africa for their performance at the Tokyo Paralympics, Ndando Mashangu won gold in the men's long jump and set a new world record with a jump of 7.17 meters. Enrun Weyers won gold for the women's 400 meters. Paralymp Paracyclist Peter, Dupri Peter Dupris Dupris also won gold. 
Lausanne could see with the guide Erasmus Badenhorst won a Paralympic silver medal in the women's 1,500 meters. Actress Tuso Mbedu for winning the TV Breakout Star Award for her role in the Underground Railroad at the 2021 Hollywood Critics Association TV Awards. The newly elected President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Hakainde Hichilema, for being elected as a President of Zambia, the success of the recent presidential election provides the basis for continuing stability and development in Zambia and also in the Southern African region. On the area of condolences, Cabinet extended its heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of Comrade KB, Mr. Kebi Mapatso, age 59, the former Deputy Minister of Defense and Military Veterans and current member of Parliament, he was the National Chairperson of Mkondo Wesizo MK Military Veterans Association. He dedicated his life to the development of this country. Singer also, and the Mawatela Queen's original member, Nobesu Tumbadu. The veteran singer died at the Tele Mkwarane Regional Hospital in the Fosnas Gauteng. She was 76 years old. On the area of appointments, as I close, ladies and gentlemen, all appointments are subject to verification of qualifications and relevant clearance. Ms. Andy Swa Oyama, yes, as Chief Financial Officer at the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment. Advocate Dinki Poshia Dube as Director General in the Office of the Public Service Commission. Ms. Devinaki Bendeman as Deputy DG, Regulatory Compliance and Sector Monitoring. Thank you very much for listening. very much minister i think we'll take questions i think you you're the first one then let me touch that with you do i have a note there is just open the file oh here oh thank you thank you let's start with you from ENCA. Um, I just have a few questions, Minister, on how the discussions were in terms of what happened this week with the electoral court application and then the withdrawal of that uh, thereof. Uh, secondly, we were told by the national um, spokesperson of the party last week that the TG is thinking of upping levies for members uh, so that you can pay your employees. Um, uh, those who are at administrative level, especially, did those discussions take place? Did they, um, you know, did they bring that uh, uh, option to cabinet, and what was the decision thereof? If that's not the route that the ANC is thinking of taking, then what is the party going to do to pay its staff? And then thirdly, the news about um, Dr. Harvard, the MP, and um, that uh, state security report that suggests that she's spying. Um, for China, what's happening in that regard? Thank you. I, th I think Minister will speak for himself, but I think this is a cabinet media briefing. It's not the ANC, because I noted all three mm. questions relate to the ANC, but I'll leave it to the Minister. But I just wanted to remind that this is a post-cabinet briefing, so that people mustn't uh, think it's an extension. Mm. So I think we'll, Minister will respond at the time. Can we take other questions? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Gigi. Um, the first question is from Gay uh, Davis from EWN. Um, the question goes as follows. Is Cabinet discussing the, r the low rates of vaccination and what is the plan? Um, where are we with the electronic vax card? Uh, predictions for fourth wave. Um, what can, can, can government can, do? Can you, can you go a bit the level? Okay. Low rate of vaccination, eh? Is cabinet discussing the low rate of vaccinations? Mm -hmm. And what is the plan with regards to that? Um, 
the other question is where are we with an electronic vaccination card um, and as well as predictions for the fourth wave can government what can government do to slow down infections or prevent um, another spike for a fourth wave and that then um, we also have a question from Natasha Piri from SABC. Um, Minister, how many South Africans have been vaccinated to date? And then um, I'll take the last question, Sister Um Nkuleko from um, Nkuleko from the Sunday Times is asking, Minister, has the NCCC discussed the easing of the lockdown restrictions? And when is the next family meeting? Okay. Minister, you have all the questions? Easy when is the next family meeting? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think you have to come there. Maybe. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, you said you're from NCA. Maseko. Yeah. Maseko. I'm sure you will appreciate. This is a government uh, briefing. Yeah. And uh, we always try to avoid blurring between the two, mm. the state and the party. So almost all your questions are better dealt with if they are referred to the party. Mm. Yes, and my apology on that. Mm. Yes. Uh, on the low vaccination rate, we got uh, about 295,000 two days ago. On daily. Yes, daily two, yes. Two, in the past two days. In daily rate. So daily, daily rate. Uh, we, we are not very much disturbed by that number. You wanted a better number than that. Uh, remember the president would have spoken about 300,000 to 400,000. It does seem since the young people have been allowed to come in, they are taking it with enthusiasm. And of course, the the program to encourage vaccination is ongoing. GCIS has got has put together a lot of messaging for the purpose of ensuring that we encourage our people not to be diverted by unverified uh, F or informations about vaccination. Just for them to know that if you want to liberate the economy in this country, which is not doing nicely, remember even before COVID, the economy was not doing well and then COVID made it worse. It's very critical for freedom of movement in South Africa to be realized very quickly, and vaccination is the route to go, so that we actually lift those who are poor, we, we deal with inequality, we put our economy back on track, so that we deal with a lot of social economic stresses that are affecting our people, so that we, have, we are able to have enough money revenue so that we can turn around our infrastructure so that our productive capacity is at a high level. It's when we vaccinate if for that to happen. Otherwise, there are various programs to actually promote vaccination that, that are in place. On the number of vaccinated, I, I read it was I said 12.5 million doses, yeah. doses to date. Not those who are fully vaccinated. We have not broken down it yeah. between those who are double and whatever. And then when are we easing lockdown? Lockdown, whether it's going to be easy or not, one, it depends a lot on the rate of infection. Mm -hmm. And secondly, also depends on the degree to which our facilities are coping. And thirdly, of course, mainly, it depends on us sticking to non-pharmaceutical protocol measures. Family meeting. Family meeting will depend on what comes out on a given and triple C meeting. At that point, if there are new uh, announcement, they determine whether the family meeting should take place or not. For instance, if you had my statement, the current protocols uh, of the virus of, of the of the protocol of COVID are, are extended to the 15th of protocol of October. So on that basis, there's nothing uh, to share with the family about. Thank you. I think 
and that's it. So we'll do. Masa for you. Okay. Okay. Um, I just have uh, another two that I'm hoping you might be able to answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in terms of um, the whistleblower, uh, Mr. Yoker, and I know you mentioned that the ANC is, um, you know, sending its heartfelt condolences to her family and friends after her passing. But in terms of the protection of whistleblowers, was that discussed perhaps uh, in the in the um, meeting in terms of the protection of whistleblowers and beefing that up? Uh, to, so that more can come forward with information that could help. Um, and then secondly, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this one, but in terms of the e-tolls, finding out that um, you know we have no choice but to possibly uh, pay for that loan, are you able to answer at least if it was discussed? Or <laughs> <laughs> You like difficult questions, Michelle. <laughs> no, on the, on the whistleblower, that is always on the radar screen of government, whether in cabinet or not in cabinet, because the value attached to the whistleblowing, especially when it comes to issues of good governance, clean governance, anti-corruption programs, is very high. So the protection of whistleblower is non-negotiable. Again, we want to repeat that uh, it's quite hurting that uh, Lady Diokarian died in the manner she died. But we also want to advise society or the public that when incidents of this nature occur, let's allow the law enforcement agents to complete their investigations so that we have a, a full sense of the motive and everything. But there's no doubt that this lady died whilst she was giving evidence. Something SIU says he's been doing for years, assisting government. We, we are very much hurting as far as that is concerned. But however, the issue of protection stands. And uh, if there are gaps, which we are always going to attend, we will continue closing those gaps because their protection is non-negotiable in as far as dealing with corruption is concerned. Or you want more? <laughs> well, okay, so you can't answer me on the gantries. Oh, oh okay, all right. <laughs> Listen, the, what, what I know is there is an agreement, is a user pay principle. <coughs> but the Utah, the Utah issue is a matter that is being dealt between the minister and the local and the, and the province affected, in particular, Houghton. Up until they complete their work with regard to this one, uh, I'm unable to uh, to actually tell you exactly what is the future, but the user pay principle is a principle that is supported unequivocally by government. And uh, the commitment to pay that when incurred. Did you know, Minister, that um, whistleblower Motepu says that she's been protected by the U.S. and not our government? Which whistleblower has been about now? Motepu, she was uh, an advisory... Um, uh, executive for a Gupta company, Trillion. So, Gupta so your company. question is? So she's a whistleblower, and she mm. says she's never been protected by our state. Instead, she's protected by states outside of our own. Uh, I must, I must confess, I've not been aware that she was not protected. Uh, and if that's the case, it's a matter we should regret. But however. I don't want to make full comment on it until mm -hmm. I actually appraise myself with the exact facts behind. I know Ms. Silomu Tebu, especially when I was uh, in the public enterprise inquiry. She, she helped the state a lot on information. And I never understood her at that time to be under, uh, what to call, remember, l let's put it this way. Maybe it's important to clarify this. When you deal with the uh, whistleblowing, they are not just a homogeneous, a homogeneous bunch of people. There are people who, who, are, who, who are witnesses in an investigation, whether sensitive or not, who, who, as far as they are concerned, they don't need what to call protection. But as they give that testimony, they may feel threatened. Those normally would report to say, well, I thought I was okay. 
But now I feel because of what I'm doing, I'm being threatened. Now they would report to the police. There's a whistleblower who from the beginning would actually need protection because he doesn't want to be to call reveal. Most of the time when we talk about protection, we are referring to, to that whistleblower. So there is a whistleblower, there's a whistleblower only protection from the beginning. The whistleblower who simply spill the beans and uh, fearlessly who feel they are okay. So sometimes we must make sure that we don't treat whistleblowing as, as comprising of people who are homogeneous in nature. So it's important to say that. But on the multiple issue, let me repeat, one needs to get more facts underlying her situation. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, I've got a few more questions. Um, Sofu Mukwena from the SABC um, is asking, did Cabinet uh, discuss recent developments in Afghanistan? Um, she's also asking that Department of International Relations issued a statement where they clarify South Africa's position on the request to receive the refugees from, Af from Afghanistan which country or organization extended the request to South Africa? That's in relation to Afghanistan. Um, Anton um, from Pretoria FM is asking, did Cabinet discuss the ETOS matter? I think that's the question we've just responded to mm -hmm. from Masiho. From um, Nazir um, from Glow TV, um, is also asking a question that was covered uh, with regards to the whistleblowers. Um, Mbali Tetana from News in Africa is asking, um, did Cabinet discuss the outcomes of the SIU report um, when pertaining to the briefing to Parliament Standing Committee on Public Accounts? There's a possibility that um, former Minister of Health, uh, Zuelim Kize, can be criminally charged. What's Cabinet's response to that? Um, she's also asking, uh, Kusala Diko will be redeployed. When can we see a permanent spokesperson um, being appointed for the president? Um, Paul uh, uh, from Bloomberg is asking, uh, has the Minister of Health introduced to Cabinet the possibility of introducing a vaccine passport system for the country that would allow the owners of private and public premises to, fr to refuse entry to people who haven't been vaccinated. Um, can I pause there? I've got a few more, uh, DG. I think okay, let's deal with this. Okay. Yeah. To, to Ms. Mukwena. The, the cabinet did receive the report on Afghanistan and even the contemplated uh, stopover for refugees who I understand to be headed towards America. And my understanding is that it's America that made that request with regard to accommodating. And I think Munyele has actually explained the underlying reasons why South Africa could not actually uh, assist in that fashion and the circumstances that are pertaining in the country. For instance, the number of refugees that are in the country as we speak mm -hmm. and the socio-economic challenges that the country is confronting and even security issues and so on. Otherwise, w this country will always support uh, protecting refugees and also participating in that big program. But I think Munyele did explain the, circumstance, the underlying circumstances. Uh, on the SIU, the, there wasn't much to discuss. Up. There wasn't much to discuss about SIU in the cabinet because those are investigations that are under the purview of the investigating institutions. And in this case, interacting with the president, and uh, we, we always opt to leave such activities in that purview. And of course, always supporting that the law should take its what to call uh, its course and uh, including the independence of the judiciary on the issue of the permanent spokesperson we cannot answer that question now in the interim mr Tarun Seal is an acting spokesperson for the president 
And again, the president will advise and uh, in collaboration with ourselves on when the next permanent spokesperson will come. We would like to leave that, the matter at that point. Any other questions? Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's quite an attractive uh, uh, matter because those of us who love football, when you watch stadiums in Europe full and so on, and hearing about the measures that Europe is engaging on, the president has actually directed the cabinet to, to look at all possible innovations that can improve, that can actually assist in actually allowing more activities in the country. And I, I guess the, the, the vaccine passport, <laughs> you remember the MEC of Lipopo would have said at some stage, she was actually saying to the, what do you call, taverns, that uh, can we have a deal that those who want to enter our space should show a vaccine certificate. A lot of innovations. The president has asked us to look at and check if uh, churches have actually approached us to say, listen, uh, why do you ask us to have 50 people in a capacity venue of about 6,000 and so on? What about proportion and so on? The, 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 the approach of government is that in dealing with the measures of COVID, we must be as indiscriminate as possible. We must be as objective as possible. And scientific rationale must govern us. But the issue of vaccine passport is one of the innovative ideas that are going to be attended to as we look at the total package of innovative ideas on how to set the country free so that the economy can start uh, flourishing. Right? Thank you, thank you, Minister. Uh, two more questions, three more actually. Um, Jan de Landa from the court is asking the Green Paper on a Was social that security. Jan de Landa. Langa, okay. Yes. Um, the Green Paper on a social security fund. Uh, was withdrawn earlier this week. Led to withdrawn earlier this week. Led to several NGOs embarking on tax tax protest campaigns. Uh, it clearly destroyed goodwill between the retirement fund industry and the state for financing social security and specifically efforts to establish a basic income grant. Whose idea was the green paper? Uh, what correction action is taken to prevent this damage um, use of official um, the damaging use of official government mouthpiece so mm. the question is in relation to the yeah. green paper that was that was is that uh, the only question um, the next question is from Khao Khelo at UFM uh, we have recently observed a number of so-called social media influencers appearing to sell government <coughs> messaging and would like to know if there, if there are any companies uh, appearing to social web platforms appearing to do it okay i'll just repeat we, we have recently observed a number of so-called social media influencers mm. so social media influencers, influencers okay. yes. um appearing to sell government messaging and we would like to know if there are any companies contracted for this purpose in di digital bike style. If yes, how many of these uh, engaged um, there's been has there been any publicly advertised tenders? So basically the question is um, the social media influences that some government departments use are those part of publicly advertised tenders? Um, in the various departments. Well, um, okay. The next question is, I'll, it's just two more questions, Minister. Mm. The next question is um, from Nazir at Glow TV. Um, following Bavita's murder, what extra measures is government planning to put in place whereby civil servants can freely expose corruption in their departments, such as having a government hotline in the presidential office for um, anonymous whistleblowers. 
And the last question is, uh, we'll, uh, we've answered this question, will the president be addressing the country in the coming days regarding the lockdown uh, restrictions? I think that question is already answered. Mm. Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much. Uh, the, I think what is key on the Christian paper is that it has been withdrawn. It's correct to accept that it could have caused some confusion. And as a matter of principle, uh, when such papers are issued, normally they would have been consulted with the cabinet. And I think it has been withdrawn to go via that process. And we don't express any view about the content of the paper at the moment until it has gone via a proper process. Uh, we will actually assess if it has caused any damage, and I have no doubt uh, communications people will have uh, to find a way of dealing with that. Uh, that that's, that's how far the issue of the green paper is concerned. On the issue of uh, social media influences, Again, uh, the DG for GIS is better place to deal with this. Let me tell you, normally departments, there's the, all departments, all the state organs have got inherent obligation to communicate messages about what they do. Uh, they don't need a tender to do that because they are integral institutions that are established for that purpose. But uh, the DG will actually uh, clarify that matter better when her time allows. I think I've spoken on the issue of the whistleblowers. And I want to repeat this because I think it, it's coming across and across and across that we are committed to the protection of whistleblowers where cracks might have occurred, always prepared to actually close those. And again, I want to repeat that as we sit here, as we sit here, I'm, but I'm standing in my situation, Masih. <laughs> <laughs> as we as we stand as, as we are standing and sitting here, there are testimonies about thousands of investigations that are taking place in this country. Not every witness qualifies to to be what to call to be whistleblower. It depends on the security threat of that witness, either objectively detected or that witness him or herself expressing that that what to call that threat. But normally, there is also, what, what also makes you a witness, we must also take this into account. There are people who become witnesses because of the positions they hold. For instance, as a minister in the presidency, if Nongaiba is being what to call investigated, by virtue of the position I'm holding, I can become a witness. So it's either you're a whistleblower because you have pressed the alarm, or you're a whistleblower because who qualifies to be protected, and so on. But the basic principle is that all those who have got an information that can assist the state, the state is always committed to make sure that they are protected. Where this has fallen through the crack, the government is always committed to correct that. And I appeal to our people that they should not retreat in this noble exercise of actually exposing fraud, criminality, and thieving. Because... The only way we can actually save this country and keep it back on track to have an economy that is performing, that is loved by the world, and make South Africa a destination for investment, is when we prevail over criminality and fraud. And we will always need their support, and we commit to their protection at all material times. And then, uh, yes, Am I, did I leave out anything? No. I didn't. Do you have anything else? <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, did you will deal with the social media tenders? You know, politicians must don't deal with tenders. They deal with the policy of tendering. Thank you very much. Let me start by, by just explaining the procurement. The procurement of media uh, agencies in GCIS, we run an open tender. Last year when we started the campaign for the COVID-19, 
there was an open tender and companies were appointed to and when they expired this year for this year the new allocated budget we ran a tender and we did and then it's an open process and we appointed but just coming down to the the question of the social media influencers i think i want to explain that the covid 19 approach has been that approach of getting everybody involved we work with ngos we work with labor we work with civil society we work with churches we work with uh, a business and the approach is that we have the content in collaboration with the department of health and we give them the content that they can use in whatever way they wish. And that is why you will find the content of government resonating in business. You will find our content in traditional leaders. You will find our content on social media for that matter. Because it's a content that we want everybody to use. So I may not know that specific social influencer but what we do know is that we encourage everybody to use the content because we want to get as many south africans vaccinated as possible we want as many voices clarifying the myth as we possibly can so that's the approach we take and we appeal that everybody should assist us in sending that message across but in terms of procurement it is an open process that is auditable thank you very much and that was my last the last question that i needed to explain and would like to thank everybody and see the minister next two weeks uh, he has committed that you will try and have these briefings every two weeks thank you very much we are Chen. Thank you.